I'm really, really impressed with this program and would like to definitely encourage students um, to take the program. I started in the medical field when I was 15 years old. So I actually uh, started out as the candy striper. So back in the day, I started volunteering and I loved um, actually working with patients. So I started with a phlebotomy program right outside of, uh, right after high school and I actually did on-job training. So I started phlebotomy when I was 16. Um, because I was involved in the lab, then I went on and I decided to be a medical laboratory technician. So I was the one that worked chemistry and blood bank, hematology, and I took an interest uh, really in um, science and mathematics. Um, as I got later in life, I learned a lot more and transitioned a lot through different facilities and decided to get into the more administrative side, learning how or why these facilities started working. And um, I went into management and administration. Um, I switched over to the business side of it. And then after years of doing different management styles and different types of specialist programs, I started teaching. So actually I've been here at SeaTech since uh, around 2009. And now I'm a full-time instructor. So one thing we need to learn is actual computer skills. Do you know how to type up a Word document? Do you need, uh, know how to do Excel sheets? Can you do a presentation? Can you do PowerPoints? Um, another skill that they learn are uh, electronic health records. Today in healthcare, it's very important that all students, um, even in today's society, have that exposure to charts that are done uh, virtually. Um, also, besides the electronic health records, we do do administrative skills, uh, learning how to answer telephones, um, knowing how to leave messages, how to communicate in a professional manner. Um, those are all really um, soft skills that we all need to be trained in. I also need to know a little bit more about um, billing and insurance. Um, also, besides uh, electronic health records, your administrative skills, your coding and billing and insurance, we do make sure that you're also uh, certified in first aid and CPR. Uh, the first one would be certified medical assistant. Uh, registered medical assistant and that is the office the office type of medical assistant that does the administrative work the second one would be certified electronic health records so it's teaching you how to use health records how to enter those demographics how to enter um, insurance and billing information how to scan things into the system uh, we also do the National Certified Insurance and Coding Specialist. That also uh, goes towards the insurance side of it, being able to communicate with those insurance companies, knowing what an appeal is, how to fight a claim, to get payment for those patients. Um, the next one would be the Internet uh, and Computing Core Certification, which is all of our certifications for our computer skills. And the last one would be uh, from the AAPC, which would be uh, for your coding certification. If you're that person that loves puzzles, um, if you like to read documentation and abstract information out, um, those are the jobs that are mostly um, allowing people to work from home and submit the, uh, the information to the facilities in order to make sure that they would withstand an audit.
it's really good because it starts from the front office, that person that's actually answering the phone. Uh, they actually can do patient education with um, patients regarding diabetes. Um, they can also help educate patients like on casting or splinting. They can make up these presentations that go on the TV screens in different um, office areas. So you'll see the education that will go up in an office so that you can help uh, create those. You also can work in the back office, which is the business department with the billing and insurance, virtually from home if you decide to go in to medical coding. Um, also with your computer skills and insurance, you may be working with the insurance companies and in pre-authorization, pre-certification, um, also doing patient uh, collections. So there is a wide range of different um, positions that you would be qualified for. Very different, of course, if you go into a facility, um, your pay range may be a little bit lower than normal here locally. You may start out or at 11 or $12, but the benefits are amazing. If you're that person that answers the phone, okay? you're scheduling appointments, you're putting information in electronic health records. Uh, it can even go, if you're headed towards Columbus area, it may even start out at 14 or 15 an hour. Now, as you progress, let's say you wanna go into electronic health records, that may start out at $15 an hour. Uh, if you go into insurance, uh, that can start out 14 to 15, sometimes $16 an hour. And the coding specialists right now locally are starting out at $17 an hour. And if, you know, depending if you uh, decide to go on and with more um, experience and you go into Columbus area, you decide to go code for someone who works uh, as a cardiologist, there are coding salaries that are starting anywhere from 23 to 26, 27 dollars an hour. You can even uh, later in life move up into an auditing position. I know at one point I actually was a consultant when it comes to documentation and auditing and um, I went as high as 40 dollars an hour when I was called in as a consultant. So. actually we've had a really good response to job placement this year it's been amazing do a lot of telehealth with covid and so the demand for those uh, documentation auditors have went up i i tell my students from day one that it's like a nine month um interview process for me uh with my contacts within the community that I try to place these students, I wanna make sure that they're dependable. They come to school every day. These are the people that they wanna hire. They don't want someone to not come to school because they just don't feel, feel like it. Um, when I actually put your name out into that community, I can guarantee that you're gonna be dependable, that you're gonna be detailed that you're going to have um, a positive personality, that you care about patient care. So when I have that interaction with the managers or administrators throughout the community, I try not to put my name on that student unless I know that they're truly dedicated to the health care of our community. student that had went through two separate college uh, I think one was radiology um, I think that she tried to start in the nursing program but decided that the clinical part of it was not for her um, she was the best student so detail oriented very smart really dedicated and uh, really wanted to make a change in our healthcare system she decided to come to SeaTac and enroll in this program and she was amazed 
um, how much she loved it here. She loved the family uh, environment, getting close to um, her peers in the classroom, being able to communicate with them, being able to complete an internship. Um, she was probably uh, one of the sweetest, kind-hearted people I had met throughout this program. After she completed the program, she received a job offer within two weeks um, from my communication with different administrators. She is currently at a local hospital and she loves it. She loves being able to abstract information from medical records, being able to work with those patients. And she, um, I think her starting rate was $17 an hour and she does work from home. And she said this was the best decision that she could have home. Actually meet Monday through Thursday, it's 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. So Monday through Thursday, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. That way it allows you to be able to hold a job Friday, Saturday, and Sunday if you need to work. Just always know that they can go to the CTEC website. They can go into the adult education programs. They can go strictly to the medical programs and the medical office specialist technology program will be listed. My contact information is there. Uh, once they ask for information, I will respond to them with steps that they need, which include completing the registration through the website you would come in for your work keys testing. I'm not really for sure if that's something that they already complete through the secondary school. Um, once they do that, they will complete their FAFSA and then they would attend orientation and be enrolled in the program.